Okay, why not begin with Vinayak's question, Rupa? Jari Prabhu. Okay. You know what? Vinayak Sharma had a question. He said, sure. I, I wish to discuss one thing, Prabhu. Um, in our case, we have not taken part in formal initial process of jagya, beads, etc. So as per Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, our way of Krishna consciousness is utpat or disturbance? Question mark. Uh, can we translate that into something which is easier to understand by someone like me? Uh, Ramachandra, what is he? What is his issue? I don't know what the issue here. I, he's saying something about taking formal initiation, and he uses the word. With him, been a quote from I don't know one of the scriptures, uh, and uh, it's saying that. Uh, Okay, let's see. He gives a devotional service of the Lord that ignores the authorized Vedic literatures like Upanishads, Puranas, and Narada Pancharatra is simply an unnecessary disturbance in society. So, um, because... That's not what Prabhupada taught. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. So, so because people have not taken, like, for example, I've not taken formal... And when from, you say Upanishad, so we only have one of, we, all we have is the Isopanishad. We have to consider that whatever Prabhupada gave us is the only Shastra that we need. There's no point or any purpose in going further or away or in any distance from what Prabhupada gave us. Right? But he's quoting from the Nectar of Devotion. Yeah. And Prabhupada gave us that. Yes. So what is it saying in the nature of the ocean? Devotional service of the Lord that ignores the authorized Vedic literatures like the Upanishads, Puranas, and Narada Pancharatra is simply an unnecessary disturbance in society. Well, how do we interpret it in the light of the fact that Prabhupada didn't give us any of those books? The nect that's the nectar of devotion or the nectar of instruction? Nectar of devotion. Yeah, well, the nectar of devotion is Rupa Goswami, no? Yes. And it is filled with information that we can use, but it's not meant for creating a nightmare for people that don't know where to find the Puranas that they're talking about. He right. says, he says, my question is different, Prabhu. It is about formal initiation process. Formal initiation process can be accomplished by an officiating acharya, meaning a double, a twice born Brahmin who is in a Krishna conscious temple or anywhere. I mean, if you have a temple in your living room, you can take initiation there. If you have a picture of Krishna, you have a picture of Prabhupada, and somebody comes in who's a twice born, meaning a Brahmin initiated devotee, he can give you initiation as Prabhupada disciple if he agrees to do that. It's called officiating Acharya. Is there any for, is it, where does it go from there? Hello? Uh, well, he said, in our case, we have not taken part in formal initial process of jagya, beads, etc. So as per Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, our way of Krishna consciousness is utpat, U-T-P-A-A-T, or disturbance, question mark. No, whatever Prabhupada taught and the way he taught it is bona fide. Prabhupada did not teach in one way and then turn us loose the books telling us to do something else. If we have a question, go with what Prabhupada did, not with the book. 
Does it make any sense? If you want to be initiated, you can be. All you need to do is find a Brahmin, person twice born, who will perform the fire sacrifice for you to be initiated. And he will give you your initiated name. Does that, make, is that okay? And another point That's I'd like to make is, is, is that if an Uttama Adhikari was present, there is no harm in taking this diksha. I mean, Prabhupada is present, but I'm saying, like, for example, there was another personality who's an Uttama Adhikari. You know, uh, why not take initiation? If Prabhupada was present, you know, our best thing... Are you I saying, mean, there's a, where is the Uttama Adhikari? No, I'm, I'm saying, he is saying here that initiation process is a bona fide system, meaning from an Uttama Adhikari. So where is that Uttama Adhikari who is, you know, walking and talking to you and that, you know, where is that person? Like, just like... Well, that, that person is Prabhupada. Why does he have to walk and talk to convince you that he's an Uttama Adhikari? No, I think I'm saying to Vinayak Prabhu that if, if you find someone like that, then, you know, you should take initiation from... But there isn't anyone like that. Yeah, that's the point, right? <laughs> that's the bottom line. Yeah. Vinayak Sharma asked, so whatever we are doing right now is not bona fide? Question mark. That's the whole problem that is being generated here, um, Ramachandra. No, what we're doing here is bona fide. And Prabhupada made it quite clear in the July 9th letter that the that the he his representative, meaning his um, what you call it um, officiating acharya, can give you initiation to be a disciple of Prabhupada. That he made clear in the July 9th letter. Does it make sense? Hello? He's not responding, so maybe he's, okay. well, he's there's, going to work. There's, so. there's no difference between what Vinay is asking and what someone would have asked in 1968 when I was initiated. You go to the pure devotee, either through himself or his representative, and you take initiation. It's not simple. Okay. The main, part, Vinayak, the main point is that you take initiation. Vinayak responded. He said, we have not even taken formal Ritvik initiation. We are just trying to read, distribute books, hear lectures, and claiming ourselves Prabhupada disciples. Okay. So Ritvik is no longer the term that we wish to use because it was not used by Prabhupada. It was used by Tamal. But representative of the Acharya was used by Prabhupada, and Prabhupada wanted to use it instead of the term Ritvik. So let's just say that if you want a Ritvik initiation, you can take the initiation representative of the Acharya, which is the same officiating thing as Brahman. Officiating Acharyas. What did I say? You said representative of the Acharya. Oh, I'm sorry, officiating Acharya, yes. So if you take initiation from an officiating acharya, uh, that's what people now tend to call Ritvik initiation. But Ritvik did not exist at the time that Prabhupada asked for officiating acharyas to be offering initiation. He said he wanted offici officiating acharyas, is that right, Rupa? Yes. He wanted officiating acharyas and somebody else came in and very rudely demanded that it be called Ritvik. But Ritvik is not the right term because it was never used by Prabhupada in any of his books, any of his letters, or anywhere at all. It was put in there by this rude person because he had heard it from a person that he wanted to see, help him become the Acharya of this kind. <coughs> so it's 
So it was a, basically a dirty trick to use the word Rithvik. Okay, but Vinayak Sharma, aside from that, he's making the point. He's saying, we're just trying to read, distribute books, hear lectures, and claiming ourselves Prabhupada disciples. The point he's making is that that's like a falsehood to say that we're Prabhupada disciples when that's all that we're doing. Well, no, of course not. Of course you're a Prabhupada disciple. A disciple is, in your, is what you feel in your heart. It's not a magical baptism or something that you take in the church. Uh, the thing is, well, let's ask Vinayak, does he want to be a Prabhupada disciple? Yeah, that's the real question, right? <laughs> does he want to be a Prabhupada yeah. disciple? Rupa, why don't you ask me now if he wants to be a pro He says disciple? yes. He says yes. Okay. So can Vinayak understand that he can be a Prabhupada disciple if a twice born Brahmin is willing to perform the fire sacrifice to make him a disciple of Prabhupada? Is there anyone there that is? so-called Ritvik? He says, without that, not possible, question mark. Well, you can declare yourself to be a Prabhupada disciple, but it would be nicer if there are people that will give initiation in behalf of Prabhupada. I don't know if there are any where you are in Japan, why not ask the Brahmin, are you willing to do a, uh, make me a disciple of Prabhupada by initiation? He might agree. There's many devotees, many gurus in Iskand who will make you either their disciple or a disciple of Prabhupada, whichever you choose. Because there's lots of people that want to be Prabhupada disciples and the people that are offering Initiation don't want to lose them, so they are willing to do the sacrifice. The the um, they're willing to do the initiation as a Prabhupada to make them a Prabhupada disciple, not their disciple. So the question is to ask Vinayak: Is there anyone in Japan who's willing to do a Prabhupada initiation? Probably my Shaitika. He commented. Radhanath Maharaj also. Well, what about Radhanath? Does I Radhanath think... make, will Radhanath make you a Prabhupada disciple? I think that's what he's saying is that Radhanath will do that if you request. Well, if he will do that, then that's fine. Radhanath is a good friend of mine. And if you want to know, you can say that you talk to Nara Narayan, and Radhanath knows me very well, and say, and you told Nara Narayan that Radhanath will make, do a ceremony that you will become a Prabhupada disciple, not a Radhanath disciple. And if that's the case, then Nara Narayan says, go, because he loves Radhanath Swami. I do, I'm very fond of Radhanath Swami. Rupa Manjari and I spent quite a lot of time with Radhanath Swami in Bombay. And, um, and we're quite willing, if he, but not to become a Radhanath Swami disciple, but to become a Prabhupada disciple. If he's willing to do it, do it. Otherwise, find somebody who is willing to do it. Vinayak Sharma said, there were some talks of him giving Ritvik initiations in San Jose. Okay, well, I don't like the word Ritvik because it belongs to the guy that poisoned Prabhupada. Come on. But it's the same term. It's the same idea. But Prabhupada didn't use the word Ritvik. Prabhupada used the word officiating Acharya. But in any event, whether it's officiating Acharya or Ritvik, it's Radhanath's willing to do it, then do it. Is anyone else ready to give um, Prabhupada initiation? Vinayak? Vinayak? 
Is Van Eyck there? He hasn't said anything. He's working, okay. so. Oh, I see. Okay. A, a lot of these guys claim to give a proper initiation, but it's kind of like, not really. They do it, but they treat them like they're disciples and they'll be just like a. Oh, a you mean the person disciple. giving the so called rhythmic initiation? Yeah. Yeah. wants to see them as their own disciple. Yes. Well, that can't be allowed. And that's why I don't like to use the word ritvik, because the people like Yasoda Nandan and other people that do so-called ritvik initiations, they want to own the life and soul of the person that they've initiated. Which is not the idea. The whole idea is to get away from that, that that person is now Prabhupada disciple, not somebody else's disciple. Okay, Vinayak said, so Ramachandra Prabhu, you are going to take one? Going to take what? Take Ritvik initiation. Ah, represent, <laughs> officiating Acharya representation, initiation. This Ritvik is from the poisoner. Tamal Krishna poisoned Prabhupada and everybody loves to use Tamal's words, not Prabhupada's words. I have a problem with that. I didn't poison Prabhupada. And Prabhupada didn't poison Prabhupada. Tamal did poison Prabhupada. And everyone wants to follow Tamal. Why is that? Ramachandra, do you think yeah, they're making I, I, too big, big an issue out of it? This the bodies wanted to get uh, officiated in this area. Initiation, do they need to be recommended by somebody? Like they're chanting the rounds and following the principles? Maybe. Prabhupada didn't always require that. When Prabhupada initiated Indian devotees, I watched them come in. They would come in and he would give them, they would give them spiritual life even without the sacred fire. He made them into disciples even without the sacred fire. So it's not that, it's not like a, ironclad thing. The GBC wants it to be ironclad so they can control your every breath and your very life air. But that's not what Prabhupada wanted. Okay. Does it make sense? It's very simple. You can take, become a Prabhupada disciple by declaring yourself to be a Prabhupada disciple. But if you want the formality and the fire sacrifice, which I definitely recommend, then take initiation from an officiating Acharya. Or what you would like to call Ritvik, or Tamal wanted to call Ritvik. A lot of these, a lot of these initiations are being conducted on internet. Well, that's true, too. So he could take, Dinay can take initiation through the internet also then. But do you, they do the fire sacrifice over the internet? Yeah. So what do they do? They get a group of people together and then Usually they do one it's, sacrifice? it's in somebody's house that they're getting initiated to and... So they do the fire sacrifice there. How many they, people do they initiate at the same time? As many as they're ready to be initiated. Well, I think that's very nice. Then Vinay can get initiated that way, no? Yeah, but somebody has to recommend them, saying that he's following. I recommend him. Then that's good. Why shouldn't I recommend? So Vinayak Sharma asked Ramachandra Prabhu, are you going to take one? Ramachandra, are you there? Did he duck? I don't know. He's not answering. As far as I'm concerned, I already initiated Ramachandra. If he wants to take another initiation, he should keep the name Ramachandra. There you go. Okay. 
that's answered. <laughs> Hare Krishna. That's been answered through superior authority. So what can I say? Yes. John. So what's next? The fire sacrifice, no. So when I, it's with the cyber, it, it seems a little weird cyber, but if that's okay, if you find someone doing a cyber initiation that is, uh, uh, which is officiating Acharya um, initiation, then why not? Now you have to send some dakshina, I'm sure. Okay, dakshina, right? Let's see, Vinay Prabhu is, yeah, he's there, okay. Yes, I, I think this, this <clears throat> initiation, I mean, it's very nice to get the official fire sacrifice done, but it's, you know, an understanding that Prabhupada is your spiritual master and you will not deviate and you're willing to serve him life after life. So that is the commitment and following yeah. of the regulatory principles very strictly. That will automatically elevate you to a higher consciousness. I mean, that has been my experience. I've associated oh, yes, with of course. so many gurus, you know, this Bhaktivikas, this Vaisheshika, Others, you know, in India. Yeah, but will they initiate you as a Prabhupada disciple or their own disciple? Oh, oh, no, I'm saying as as I am right now, uh, you know, my my understanding, as I chat more and I read more, you know, my understanding grows, you know. As... So are, are, are you initiated by a guru, an Iskan guru, or are you initiated by Prabhupada? Initiated by Srila Prabhupada. Okay, that's wonderful. How did you do it? You're talking to Ramachandra, Narayan. Oh, <laughs> I thought I was talking to Vinayak. <laughs> okay, that answers. <laughs> All right. So it's just following the process that Prabhupada outlined and accept, like you said, accepting him in your heart as the, as the spiritual master. You know, it's not anything mystical. You know, Prabhupada is your spiritual master. I gave you the name Ramachandra. You can accept it as initiated right. name, but you didn't have a fire sacrifice. Yeah. If you want a fire sacrifice, then what you could do is go online, get a fire sacrifice, and say, I want the name Ramachandra. Right. That's it. And then, then you'll be officially fire sacrificed in as a disciple of Prabhupada. Right. Which would be nice. So where are we now? Rupa, you're the boss, right? Yeah, the, that's that's all that he said. Okay, do you want to do any reading? Sure. So which one do you want to read? Um... This one. Oh, well, that's the one that you worked on. Okay, so this is written by Narayan. It says, hopefully, hopefully not. The war karmis, the COVID karmis, the economic karmis are doing their job under the control of the personified Kali. We cannot make planet Earth better for all. That ended 5,000 years ago with King Yudhisthira. It looks as though our overly mechanized global environment will end in mechanized global slavery. Lord Chaitanya has freely given us the Hare Krishna mantra, and this mantra is like a lifeboat on the Titanic. For bodily survival, we need to create 10,000 acre fertile Daivavarnashram farms with the devotees divided and functioning according to Varna. The demoniac GBC has turned ISKCON into a weak replica of the Catholic Church. 
Srila Prabhupada did not want a centralized, unelected GBC, and he wanted each temple to be individually incorporated and totally autonomous, not a global corporation. Our number one job is to expose the endless crimes perpetrated by the Prabhupada murdering GBC. Then each independent ISKCON temple will no longer need any aimless and pointless GBC appointed gurus as the Hare Krishna mantra is itself a Shaktavesh avatar that does not require an ISKCON guru to make potent via initiation. Prabhupada and his Vani will remain as the effulgent Acharya on the center of each ISKCON temple for the next 10,000 years. Yes, Lord Krishna is still alive, and Srila Prabhupada is still eternal and alive. He will always be alive. Are you ready to fill the streets of every town and village with Sankirtan for the next 10,000 years? If you are, then welcome to ISKCON in its pure and unadulterated transcendental form. Is that the end of? Yeah, that's the end. Okay, so why not go over it line by line with people and see what they have to say? Okay, the war karmis, the COVID karmis, the economic karmis are doing their job under the control of the personified Kali. Okay, karmi just basically means someone who's addicted to the material world and whatever the material world is giving, meaning that, you know, whatever propaganda, you know, these people are coming up with material sense gratificatory, right? Is that the yeah, word karma? Karma means they're generating karma. Yes, okay. But are devotees generating karma also? They're not, they're not supposed to be. If people chant, follow the four regular principles and chant the Maha Mantra, and do Sankirtan, where is the karma? Okay, in that way, yes. There's no karma. Yeah. Right. Now, if they get married and there's so much furniture required and food required and stuff like that, if right. they take the food and they offer it as prasadam, back mm. in 1967 and 8, th there were so many devotees like Shama Sundar and Malati and Gurudas and Yamuna, they would get the money themselves, cook the cook big pots of prasad, and on Sunday they would bring it to the temple for the Sunday feast. So there's no karma involved there. This was an offering to Krishna that they prepared during the week and it came to the temple on Sunday. Sorry. Does that make sense? Yeah. So no karma was de developed. However, if they were doing other things uh, in their home, watching television or stuff like that, that's karma. Any sense gratification, artificial sense gratification is karma. You know? So it's very possible to generate karma as a householder but the whole point is you have given a certain amount of leeway as a householder to chant Hare Krishna and to purify your <clears throat> anarthas of householder life. But as a brahmachari <coughs> or brahmacharini, you should have, no, or sannyasi, you should have zero karmic, karmic life. The present situation where they're giving salaries to sannyasis and salaries to temple presidents is completely out of the question. They can't do that. Prabhupada said if the person is in the temple and they get married and they can't live like brahmachari, brahmacharini in the temple, then they go out and get a job. They don't get money from the temple. Does that make sense? Yeah, the, the idea is that all the money anyone, in the right. temple belongs to Krishna. Yes. Yeah. And so how I can take what belongs to Krishna and spend it for what? Spend it for a... What would I spend Krishna's money on? 
a, a new computer, a stereo, clothes? What do I spend the money for? A salary, fat salary from the temple. What do I spend it on? That, I, that can't be accomplished by a simple renunciation. But when I was a brahmachari in Columbus, Ohio, and in San Francisco, stuff like that, but in Columbus, Ohio, I became keenly aware of it, that I didn't spend money on anything. So what about your clothes? Well, there'd always be a heap of clothes behind the temple somewhere. If I needed a sweater, I'd go and get one. If I needed other things, I would go pants, I'd go get them. I didn't have to spend a penny. These are cast off things. And I used them in Christian service. Right? So I didn't have to spend money for clothes. I didn't have to spend money for food. When it's time for prasadam, I go into the temple and there'd be plates sitting on the, on the floor. You sit down and they give you a plate and you take take prasadam to your full satisfaction. So where's the question of buying food, restaurant, like that? Not necessary. The idea is a monk is a person who's giving up everything to serve Krishna. Now you can't give up everything because you may need a toothbrush or you may need toothpaste. That uh. can be supplied by the temple. The temple commander would keep a supply of things like toothbrushes and toothpaste, and you can get that, but it's not that you have to go and make, get lots of money to buy yourself some big fancy electric toothbrush. You don't need to. Just brush your teeth in a normal fashion. In fact, you don't even need a toothbrush. You go out to a eucalyptus tree. Prabhupada used to go out and we'd harvest him uh, twigs from the eucalyptus tree and he would take them and he would cut them into like four inch lengths. Then he'd chew on one end. Then with that one end, he would brush his teeth. He would scrub the, use the fuzzy end to scrub his teeth, eucalyptus. Eucalyptus oil is very purifying and it's very antiseptic. So he didn't need toothpaste. He didn't need a toothbrush. And so we began to do the same thing. We'd get, uh, eucalyptus twigs to brush our teeth. In India, they don't use eucalyptus. I don't know if they even have eucalyptus. What they, they have is neem. neem. Yeah. Go ahead. Describe. Yeah, they, they use neem, which is uh, a powerful antiseptic, antibacterial, antifungal um, herb, plant, tree. Tree, twigs. So it's a tree, big tree. When you snip off the branch, snip off the twigs into just like the just like the eucalyptus four inch lengths and then you chew on the end then use it to brush your teeth so you don't have to do anything you don't have to buy a toothbrush or toothpaste and if you take a bath three times a day you don't need to take deodorant you don't need cologne and as far as your clothes are concerned if you're a devotee, they will supply you with a dhoti, kurta. And how many dhotis or kurtas do you need? Well, basically, maybe two. One to wash and one to wear. So that's how simple it is to live in a temple. Okay, next sentence. We cannot make planet Earth better for all. That ended 5,000 years ago with King Yudhisthira. So can you, somebody describe that situation? Well, when King Yudhishthira was present, there were many, many eternal associates who traveled with Krishna, uh, you know, meaning that, you know, they were present with Krishna and his old family was present. So, yeah, <laughs> in one way. And when, yes, uh, when Kali Yuga when started, all these things diminished. Integrated. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. so we still had the Vedic culture for a thousand, a couple of thousand years after the Vedic culture disappeared. Yeah. But then the, the, the mm. Muslims came and took over. They defeated the Vedic kings, the Rajas, the Maharajas, emperors. 
They defeated them. And the principle of defeat amongst the Maharaj, if someone defeats you, you become their servant. So if the Muslims came, the Maharaj, who is a Krishna conscious person, becomes a servant of the Muslim, who is not a Krishna conscious person. So that's what happened to the Vedic culture. After a few centuries, after a few couple of thousand years, it all disintegrated into nothing. And the Sanatan Dharma, meaning the, the people that were practicing the Varnas and Ashramas in the Vedic culture, became relegated out and were called Hindus, meaning those people living on the other side of the Indus River. They couldn't say Indus, so they said Hindus. So that's what happened. So what can you say more? Who would like to say more about the Kali Yuga? That the earth being better for all. What is the story there? Can anyone offer any more comment? Okay, well, the thing is that in Kali Yuga, everyone is trying to make their life better and they're trying to make the world better. And they're trying to make the world, you know, electricity. No, no horse dung in the streets. You have motor cars, street cars, cable cars. And because of all of that, supposedly getting better and better, the earth is being covered with freeways and streets. It means that you can't grow any crops in it anymore. So the whole idea is to try to make the earth better, but it doesn't really make the earth better. If you follow the Vedic model, the earth would be better. But they can't, and they can't even imagine it. So they make the earth worse in the name of making it better. So, okay, so go ahead, Rupa, next. It looks as though our overly mechanized global environment will end in mechanized global slavery. Well, if you look at the news, that's pretty obvious, mm -hmm. no? Yeah. Who wants I... to comment? Ramachandra, if you want to comment? Or anyone. Well, the slavery has been going on. It's you know the exploitation of you know the natural resources, human beings, uh, animals, Mother Earth. Yeah, you know, all these things. There's no more yeah. sharing. You know, among the devotees. I mean, I mean, even among yeah. the, you know, so everyone has the individual nice system for places of cattle. residence. But then they slaughter the cattle. So what's the use of making a nice arrangement for cattle if you're going to kill them? You know, big cattle ranches. Expectation, yeah. What's the yeah. point of yeah. it? The sinful, you know, wholesale sinful uh, reaction. Yeah. The mass murders, suicides, terrorist attacks, all these things come into play when we participate as a community or as a country, or as a universe. <laughs> yeah, so we don't have any way out, and all of the scientific thinking actually makes the situation worse, not better. Because if you have an agricultural community, then there's plenty of fresh vegetables, you have cows for milk, you have horses to pull the, you have oxen to pull the plow, you have horses to pull the chariot, the, 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 the coach. You have everything you need. But without that, then you don't have anything. So that's the question of Dhabhavan Ashram, dividing according to Varnas and Ashramas, so that the Brahmins are in charge of making sure everything is going smoothly. The Chatras protect the land. The Vaishas uh, are protected by Mother Cow. The cow protects the Vaishas and everybody else, but the Vaishas are in charge of caring for the cow so that the cow is free to protect everyone and will be happy doing so. Then, the, then after that, the Shudras come and work and provide labor for every single group. One of a house, they'll, one of a lodge house, they'll build you lodge houses. 
then a group of people can move in. If they want to weave cloth, the shooters will weave the cloth. You want to harvest the grain, the shooters will harvest the grain. So the shudras are, are so much more many people than, um, than you will find in, um, there's so many more people than, than, than you will find in the Brahman or whatever. It's a triangular shape. So I like to joke that the purpose of the Vedic culture is to feed the shudras. Varnashram Dharma, because there's more shudras than anybody else. But if we feed the shudras, they return with labor. If they return with labor, then the Vaisha can concentrate on cultivating hybridized crops, breeding cows, and doing stuff like that. And the Chatras can concentrate on weaponry and protecting the community. And the Brahmins can then cook for prasadam and offer it to Lord Jagannath, cook prasadam for everybody. And that's very nice, no? So I know, go ahead. Okay, Lord Chaitanya has freely given us the Hare Krishna mantra, and this mantra is like a lifeboat on the Titanic. Could somebody else give a commentary than me? Who would like to comment? Basically, what you're saying is that Lord Chaitanya has given us the Hare Krishna mantra. Everything is going down, down, down. But if we have the Hare Krishna mantra, then we're saved. Yeah. Yeah, because if you're on the Titanic and you don't get to a lifeboat, you're going to drown. <coughs> okay, keep going. Is this boring or is it okay? It's okay. Okay. For bodily survival, we need to create 10,000 acre fertile Daiva Varnashram farms with the devotees divided and functioning according to Varna. So we've discussed that. And without it, it's not possible to survive. But the key thing about the Vaishas is that they're not businessmen with briefcases and Mercedes Benzes to drive around exploiting people. The Vaisha doesn't, no, in this Vedic culture, nobody requires any money. No, the Vaisha is not going to sell the crop to somebody else. The Brahman, the Vaisha gives the money, gives the crop to the Brahmins, and the Brahmins cook it or store it. They store it, and what they don't store, they cook. And everybody comes three, four, five, ten times a day. It takes prasadam in the temple of Jagannath, just the way it's done in Jagannath Puri. So go ahead. The demoniac GBC has turned ISKCON into a weak replica of the Catholic Church. Okay, why not read the next paragraph too? Srila Prabhupada did not want a centralized, unelected GBC, and he wanted each temple to be individually incorporated and totally autonomous, not a global corporation. Yeah. Anybody want to comment on that? Rupa, do you want to comment? Well, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yes. So keep going. Our number one job is to expose the endless crimes perpetrated by the Prabhupada murdering GBC. Okay, that regards a little explanation. Because in 1970, Prabhupada created the GBC. Or so he thought. He created something called the GBC. And the GBC, it means Governing Body Commission. He wanted the GBC to be composed of elected temple president. You know, supposing you have like 30 temples. So you make a slate of candidates, maybe 20 people you want to see as GBC. Then the temples all vote who is going to be that GBC. 
So you end up with 12 GBC. That 12 GBC uh, is for three year term and it can be reelected. The comparison of the GBC is like Cong like the states, the senators in the state of, Cal of the United States. The se senators are elected to four year terms and they can be reelected, but they represent the states. They don't represent the federal government. They don't represent anything centralized. They just represent the states. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so that the um, so that the GBC was then to be elected every three years. That means the temple president, when he ceases his three year or maybe six year term, whatever, he goes back to being temple president. He will have so much knowledge and ability. And what does the GBC do? Well, at that time there was the Hare Krishna explosion. The temple president. The GBC, I mean, goes to all the temple presidents. There may be some temple president that has a small, that has a nice place, but he has no training or background whatsoever. I like to give the example of myself in 1969, the year before Prabhupada created the GBC, that I was sent to Detroit. They just had a house on 74 Forest Avenue. They just had a house and everybody was walking around in karmi clothes chanting japa on their beads. So, and the altar was a cardboard box with a picture of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya and Prabhupada on the box. And they would offer incense. And that was all they did. And then of course they would offer prasadam, but not very complicated. So when I got there, I ended up turning one room into a temple room with curtains coming across from side to side with an altar going up and with Jagannath deities. I carved a set of Jagannath deities and we put them there. Then we went out to the Indian district, to the Indian stores, and we bought all the articles for doing, fortunately they had them, it doesn't know what was the case. We bought all the articles for doing artsy, ghee lamp, and um, conches and everything. So we got all of that. And having been recently trained up in all of that stuff in Los Angeles, I taught them how to do it. So I could have been a temple president turned into GBC doing that, because that's what a GBC could do. It wouldn't necessarily be able to carve deities. I happen to know how to do it, so I did it. But, um, but that's the basic principle to set the temple up so it's successful in its own right. So we painted the inside of the temple. We made a nice uh, saffron colored prasadam hall, which is good for digestion. And we got big cooking pots and the ladies learned how to cook Prabhupada recipes. And I would sit there in the kitchen amongst everybody cooking, carving the Jagannath deities with a hammer and chisel. And then when they were ready, they got painted and put up on the altar. And then we gave lectures. Well, that temple, which was nothing, these were all people that were going to be going to the University of Michigan uh, Medical School. They were all background, they were doing pre-med calculate, you know, their education. Well, what happened is that Bhagavan Das took over as being in charge. I trained them up completely from what I had learned in Los Angeles. See, that's what the GBC does. They go in and there's a householder wandering around, doesn't know what to do. I say, okay, uh, do you want to be in charge? Yes. If you want to learn how to do, be temple president? Yes. Here's what you do, A, B, C, D. So we start giving really good lectures. Then that was, and I used to give all the kirtans. I used to be in charge of the kirtans, largely because I like chanting and like doing the kirtans. So what happened is people started coming. And there was one karmi, there was one commune that brought people. Twenty people from that commune joined the temple. Next thing you know, they were all wearing duties and saris and chanting Hare Krishna in the temple. Here it was from like half a dozen people turned into like thirty people. And then more people came from here and came from there into the temple. 
That's what the GBC does, is they set it up so that people will come. And um, one of the people that came was in charge of the commune, which was in charge of manufacturing LSD for the Midwest. And um, he became Indradumna Swami. The guy was in charge of the LSD commune. And so, so, so many people came. So many marriages came out of that. And so um, that's, how it, that's how it was all developed. So then after, how much time did it take? A year, two years, three years? No, maybe two months. Everything was finished, ready to go. It was autonomous up to that. Bhagavan knew what to do. He ran the whole thing. And there were people there who had come from Rupa Nuga's cl class at, at the University of Buffalo. And he had an evening class on Krishna consciousness. And all the devotees, all the people who went to that class, maybe it was two or three classes, they all joined. And they all came to Detroit and joined. Many of them went on to become GBCs, gurus, all sorts of stuff. Uh, out of that class. There was a, one girl that became a fantastic pujari known as Sladini. And uh, she worshipped the deity that I carved. And funny thing is that I carved more deities, Jagannath deities for New Vrindavan, and she went to New Vrindavan and worshipped those deities. So it was really interesting that she had a tendency to worship deities that I carved. But in any event, and I hardly ever spoke to her ever. So, so that's the uh, that's what was the GBC was supposed to do. Now, do you get it? Do you have any questions? Who has any questions about the GBC and what they're supposed to do? And remember, I wasn't a GBC. I was just a brahmachari. So I went from Detroit. After that, I went to Buffalo, fixed up, carved deities for him and fixed up a whole temple for him. Taught every, oh yeah, on the Sankirtan devotees in Detroit, I took them out on Sankirtan. They didn't know what to do. So I took them out on Nagar Sankirtan or in the streets, in the city, chanting Hare Krishna. And we would go up to a certain street corner. It was ideal near... Um, near, I think it's Hayward or Hayworth or something, department store, which was the most fashionable fashion department store in Detroit. So we went up on that street corner, but it was getting around towards Christmas time. So one day we went out to our favorite street corner that we thought was ours, and there was a Salvation Army on that street corner, like 25, 30 people with tubas and trumpets and and singing and costumes and everything. And we said, what are you doing on our street corner? And they said, what do you mean your street corner? corner? Uh, it's our street corner. I said, well, how do you figure? We've been chanting here for months. How can you call it your street corner? He said, because this time every year we come out at Christmas time and sing Christmas carols on the street corner. So I could see that was a lost cause because, you know, they. They had been there before us for years and years. So we're not going to fight them over a street corner. But I said, your religion, Christianity, this was back when all the advertisement was the Christian churches are closing and devotees are taking and buying the churches and making them into temples. It was sort of like the way things were and everybody knew about it, including these people in the Salvation Army. So I said, you're in the Salvation Army. You're belonging to the old religion that's dying. Christianity, and we belonging to the new religion, Christian consciousness, which is just emerging. So why don't we have a, tonight, let's just have a joint program on the street corner, and then after tonight, it's all yours, you take it, it's yours, because it's been yours for decades, and we'll go and find another street corner. They thought it was good. I said, you have a band, why don't you have them play and we'll chant? He said, but we don't know how to play what you chant. And then I thought, well, why don't you try, <clears throat> do you know how to play 
this land is your land, this land is my land? They said, sure, of course we do. This land is your land, this land is my land, from California to New York Island. So I said, can you play that? They did, with tubas and tr trombones and everything. And so we chanted to this land is your land, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. And they were playing this land is your land. It was so amazing, trippy. And so then that was the last time. And then we went out and taught another street corner to chant. Do you think that's amusing or what? Yeah, very. Fun. So back then it was very much fun. Everything was fun because so, so I taught them how to chant on the streets. That's what the GBC can do. I went in there, they didn't know any of these things. They knew the Maha Mantra because they'd learned it from Rupa Nuga. <clears throat> but that's all they knew. They didn't know anything else. So I taught them everything. How much? Month and a half, two months. That's all. Carved the deities, taught them to do cook, taught them to do everything. How to where the dhotis and the women, not where the saris and the temple was decorated, 20, 30 people joined. It became initiated devotees. So that's what Prabhupada wanted the GBC to do. And then after he finished, like supposing I had been a GBC, then after I spend a year doing that, or three years doing that, then I go back to my temple. So you should make it understand that the GBC wouldn't leave the temple. The GBC would still be in the temple as a temple president. But when they had GBC meetings, they might go away for a week or two to take care of Krishna consciousness activity. You see? And developing new temples. And what else can you do besides doing what I did in Detroit? My being a beat the GBC by one year. What, what else can you do? And that is, supposing you have three temples and you'd like to open a restaurant. So why don't you open a restaurant using the manpower from all three restaurants? Well, we don't know how to run a restaurant. We don't know what to do. How can we learn how to do it? Well, we're the GBC. We'll come in and teach you how to do all of that stuff. So the GBC would come in and do that, you see? The GBC would come in and help people develop a restaurant with a gift shop, just like New Dorca has, except not so completely jammed in there. And so the restaurant could be a separate place and people would go there for, to the restaurant and cook and clean and wait on tables. And you, suddenly you become a fashion statement in the town in which you are. So do you see how that could work? And there's other things. You could start uh, a kindergarten. Another thing that could be started, which is something I really wanted to see happen and probably haven't ever been able to see happen, is when you go in, 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 in Vrindavan and you ride on a rickshaw, Rupa, do you ever remember what it says on the back of the rickshaw when you're following another rickshaw? No. It said hypothecated to the bank of Punjab. Did you ever see that? No. Okay, well, yeah, they have little signs saying hypothecated. That means the bank of Punjab holds a lien or a lease uh, uh, that they're leasing. The, they're, they're, they, the bank of Punjab bought the rickshaw and the guy's paying it off. So hypothecated means uh, in, in English, 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 Indian English, English. Hypothecated means mortgage to the bank of Punjab. So anyhow, what we were thinking is, why couldn't the Indians in the community come in and say, why not, you want to open, you know, as Indian people in those days, they didn't have much money. You want to open an Indian store, well, why don't we make an Indian store hypothecated to the Krishna temple? What do you mean by that? Well, we'll give you the money from the temple to open the store. We'll own 50% of the store. So you give us 50% of the profit or 15% or 20%, whatever deal you work out. And that way you can start immediately and not have to 
work and work and work to get money to open your store. And we'll help you. And then you give us discount for the temple devotees. And you can buy dhotis and kurtas and saris in India and sell them at cost to the temple. Or you can even donate them to the temple. But the main thing is that the temple, that the store run by the Indian community will be hypothecated to the temple. <coughs> and where did I get that idea? <coughs> in, in, in Frederick Street near Temple, next to the Frederick Street Temple was another identical shop. And Gargamuni ran that shop as an import store. So it was sort of like hypothecated to the temple. He was running the store and the prophet was going to the temple. So do you see how that can work? That's the GBC. So any other questions on GBC? It's a lot different than the GBC trying to... So what did the GBC do? Rupa, can you explain what the GBC actually did instead of doing, doing this nice stuff? Well, yeah, they took over the movement. So what happened to the idea that they were to sign the direction of management? Well, as Bhagavan said, they ignored it. Did they ever sign the direction of management? Well, the there were three witnesses that signed it in addition to Srila Prabhupada. And there were 12 people listed, 11 people? Is it 11 or 12? 12, I think. 12, listed as GBC members. Their names were on the contract. It was signed to witness. Everybody swore that they were going to follow it and they were going to be elected for three-year terms. Guess what? They refused to take election. They wanted to be in charge of the movement. They did not want to be servants of temples. Because the temple president would go back to being a temple president. These guys said temple president becomes GBC. Now GBC becomes the master of 10 temples and runs them and takes the profit and puts it in the central bank account. That's what they wanted. And that's what they did. So now we have that multi, multi-million dollar GBC completely disconnected from ISKCON. It has no relationship because they never signed the direction of management. I strongly feel that we could go to a court of law and have the, direct, the GBC kicked out because they have never been elected. How can they be GBC if they're not elected? It says right in their charter that they have to be elected every three years. So I think we're in a strong position. But like so many other things, just like everybody likes to say Ritvik instead of uh, officiating Acharya, everybody likes to say that Ritvik because Tamal Krishna was poisoning Prabhupada, insisted on Ritvik. So everybody goes Ritvik, Ritvik, Ritvik. Well, the GBC is completely, the people in the, are completely convinced that the GBC has absolute power over ISKCON and over everything. And they've created gurus. ISKCON didn't create gurus. The GBC created gurus. And they even declare themselves to be equal to the Pope of the Catholic Church. The Pope of the Catholic Church is the, uh, what is it, Rupam? I don't know. You do know. The um, authority, what is it? Oh, the ultimate ecclesiastical authority of the church is the Pope and the GBC claims that they, they are the ultimate ecclesiastical authority of ISKCON. They are not even hiding the fact that they think that they're the Catholic Church. They're not even pretending. So I think that we're in a strong position if we will, if we have the willpower, we have the strong position to go and say, we want make a whole list, a whole wall, like a big wall ta tapestry, and on it, all the crimes. And what are these crimes? Molested children in the Gurukul, 
They wouldn't have been delisted. Can you imagine if you're a temple president and you send your child or the child of one of your temple members to India to be educated and somebody is danger, there may be a child molestation. You go to India, you'd fly to India and kill that person immediately. But no, but they, because the GBC was not elected, they made a point of protecting the institution, just the way the Catholic Church is protecting the molestation by priests. The, the ISKCON protected. So that's a crime. That is not a crime of ISKCON. It's a crime of the GBC. So the GBC also has committed so many other crimes. They've created gurus to collect money and to wield power. They've minimized Prabhupada. They put him in the background instead of in the foreground. What else, Rupa? What can you think of? What can anyone else think of? What have the GBC done? They've made ISKCON take the blame for their sins. Yeah, they claim the ISKCON. Now, what is ISKCON? ISKCON is pure. ISKCON is coming from Krishna Loka. Why? Because Prabhupada created ISKCON. Nobody helped him create ISKCON. No one told him what to say. He created ISKCON from Krishna Loka. To be able to make that more convincing, let's just say Krishna is in Krishna Loka. We all know that. When you go back to home, back to Godhead, you're going back to Krishna in Krishna Loka. How do you get there? By the grace of Prabhupada. So what is the grace of Prabhupada? Prabhupada comes from Krishna Loka. He's an Uttam Adhikari, or a pure devotee of the Lord. Because Prabhupada is coming from Krishna Loka, he cannot be killed by poison. He was, his body was poisoned. They put him in samadhi so that they could become gurus, the fools. But the actual fact is, Prabhupada is eternal, and he can remain eternal in ISKCON. But what, why do we want ISKCON? There are complete people who are foolishly claiming that ISKCON has been completely corrupted and that ISKCON has to be destroyed as well as the GBC. I state clearly, openly, and in the presence of the deity and in the presence of Lord Krishna, that if you try to destroy ISKCON, Krishna will destroy you. Because ISKCON came from Krishna Loka. If you take a deity and try to destroy the deity, good luck. Krishna will destroy you if you try to destroy the deity. If you take a Murti and Prabhupada and try to destroy it, well, that's good luck. Prabhupada, Krishna will destroy you if you try to destroy in Murti of Prabhupada. So if you try to destroy ISKCON, you'll destroy your own devotional creeper. End of story. There are people who believe ISKCON is material. They will find out in the court of Yamaraj how mistaken they were. Okay, so we want to separate the GBC from ISKCON then what about ISKCON? It's full of all these corrupt people. But all these corrupt people are put there by the GBC. Once you take the GBC out and separate them, I like to use the example the GBC is like a great big cancer tumor, big fat tumor, like, a, like makes your belly huge, cancerous. And then if you cut the temper, the cancer away, you're left with this gun, which is an athletic body of healthy tissue. So we cut away the GBC and you end up with the healthy tissue of this gun. And if you want pure kirtan, you don't have to listen to the GBC guys, no hard and fast rules garbage. No hard and fast rules means that anybody can chant. Not that you can chant any melody. What idiot is going to chant a melody different than his spiritual master chants? What foolish person will take initiation and then chant his own melody? 
Why do you want to chant your own melody? You've been given a guru who comes from Krishna Loka. If you turn into his, tune into his recorded kirtans, that's what he chants like. And we've been going on for, for so many decades, chanting, 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 melody, 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 that we create, the heart and fast rules creating. And yet, who is turning into Prabhupada? Who is tuning into Prabhupada's kirtans memorizing Prabhupada, Prabhupada chanting and chant like your spiritual master. Prabhupada is your spiritual master. Why you cannot chant like your spiritual master? It's required. You know where I got the first experience was that when I was at that ashram of Ashok Fakir, who was a total, the Baal Bengal sort of guy, brought by, by um, Allen Ginsberg, um, he, had, he was sat in the back of his really strange temple. It was a hippie temple. They were had a skull on the altar, Rudraksha beads, and pictures of Mayavadi and, and, and Ramakrishna and stuff like that. But he had Prabhupada on a little record player in the back of the room. And when I would go back there and listen, I had this mental image of Prabhupada, who I didn't even know what he looked like, that Prabhupada would be sitting under a tree, like a banyan tree. He'd be sitting under the tree, and his disciples would be sitting around him in the front. And Prabhupada would be leading the kirtan. <laughs> Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Prabhupada would be chanting. Then the chorus would come in, and I could visit, envision them sitting in front of Prabhupada, all looking at Prabhupada, chanting exactly the way he chanted. Because that's the way it used to be, like on that record. Prabhupada would chant, and then they would chant exactly the way he chanted. And from that, I got the impression that when you surrender to a spiritual master, and he chants, you surrender to him and chant the way he chants. But no, everybody after 1970 wanted to chant like Bengalis. They wanted to chant like this, like that, like the Godia mouth, like Ramakrishna mission. They wanted to chant anyway, except like Prabhupada. Then they got into their own kirtans. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, which has no root anywhere, not even in the garbage of Bengal. So this we have to let it go, okay? It's not very difficult. And how do you let it go? You put on earbuds or headphones. Get 20 people listening to the same recording. Like you have 20 branches coming out of that one recorded record, you know, one, one computer, whatever it is, playing Prabhupada Melody. And 20 people are listening simultaneously. With They could put blinders on. They could put... Uh, my, on their eyes, so they don't look around the room. <clears throat> they can sit and listen for two hours every day to Prabhupada chanting. Now that's what it sounds like in Krishna Loka. How do I know? P Prabhupada is from Krishna Loka. What else do I know? Narthanda Sakur, the great Acharya, says, Hare Krishna comes straight from Krishna Loka. But with chanting, I have no connection. Day and night, I'm burning in this dark world without working to make the correction. So the part that I want to draw your attention to is Hare Krishna comes straight from Krishna Loka. So why are we chanting like Bengali idiots, like eunuchs? The eunuchs chant. They have, Unix means their, you know, what's are chopped off. Their reproductive organs are chopped off. And they put earrings and they just like women. And they go door to door and either they give them money when they chant or they will curse them. So everybody gives them money even though they hate them. <clears throat> so anyhow, that's the point, okay? Krishna comes straight from Krishna Loka. So that's what I began to understand. 
So now we can rescue the Krishna consciousness movement by chanting like Prabhupada on the records. And if we do that, we're hearing the pure devotee directly. And in a hundred years, if we're still doing that, listening to the record player, uh, to, to the recording, we'll be chanting and hearing Prabhupada directly. 500 years, we'll be hearing Prabhupada chanting directly. A thousand years, we'll be hearing Prabhupada chanting directly. 5,000 years, you can say it yourself directly, right? And 10,000 years, Prabhupada will still be chanting the way he did in 1966, because that's how we will be chanting when we chant. Do you like that? Yes. Is there anybody online that doesn't like it? Okay, but only one person said they did like it. Does anybody else want to say that they like it? Is there anybody else online? Yes, sir. I like it. Hare Krishna. Jai. Yes. And who else likes it? Who else is online? Vinayak Prabhu is online. Uh, so why not say if you say you like it or say you don't like it? Why not just come out like that? Do you like that we will chant like Prabhupada chanted when he first came to America? Remember, the melody isn't an Indian melody. It isn't a Bengali melody. It's a Krishna Loka melody that he chanted. Hare Krishna comes straight from Krishna Loka. That's what Narantan does to Krishna's. So is that okay? Maybe I took, did too much talking and everybody fell asleep. I hope not. But I'm trying to convey that message. Is that okay? Does anyone disagree? Does anyone agree? Nobody agrees. I agree. I agree. I agree. Oh, too. He, do you agree? Haribo. Yes, Haribo. Good. Yes, so everyone. And Ramachandra, do you agree or are you there? He he just left a second ago. Okay. So that is there any reason to consider that an inferior program? No. Well, anyhow, what happened is that Thakur Bhaktivinoda said that when the pure devotee utters speech or kirtan, whatever, he comes from his lotus mouth. It's pure. Whoever hears it is not a pure, if he's not a pure devotee, which he probably isn't, and in the case of Prabhupada, nobody else is pure devotee, if, including his god brothers, and said, if you hear the pure devotee and you repeat it to somebody else, it may be very, very nicely done, but not quite perfect. And when that person delivers it to somebody else, it will be even less perfect. And you go down 20, 30, 40 times, like the telephone game, it'll get to the point where you can't recognize it's the same thing that was said at the beginning. So that's why it's so important to have Prabhupada's recorded kirtan uh, as our model, because then we'll have the pure devotee in every year, decade, 100 years, 500 years, 5,000 years, 10,000 years, will all be pure devotee, Prabhupada. Okay, now, you want to go up further, Rupa Manjari? No, I think you covered it. Well, is there, did I cover the whole page? Oh, do you, you want me to read the next line? Yeah. Okay. Then each independent ISKCON temple will no longer need any aimless and pointless GBC appointed gurus as the Hare Krishna mantra is itself a Shaktavish avatar that does not require an ISKCON guru to make potent via initiation. Who would like to comment on that? Rupa, why don't you comment? It's, a, it's an interesting thing. I could, but I just went forever talking. Do you want to say? Uh, I'm just reading it. Yes. 
Well, yeah, you're talking about the the aimless and pointless GBC appointed gurus. They really are pointless. They just are trying to fill Srila Prabhupada's shoes and but they don't have the qualification for that. And it's, keep going. What were you gonna say? Oh no, go ahead. Okay. Um, whereas the Hare Krishna mantra is continuously self-potent. Because it's a Shakti Vishabhata. Exactly. And it doesn't require any guru. If Lord Chaitanya uttered the Hare Krishna mantra 500 years ago, and people repeated it to each other, without becoming devotees, without giving up meat eating, without giving up anything, without giving up intoxication, if they repeat it generation after generation until today, it's still a shock to Vishavatar. Right. And all of them, by hearing it once, will go back to Godhead. Oh, at the end of this lifetime? Dream on. No, when they become free from material attachment, that's when. When they're no longer attached to the material body, that's when. So go ahead. Yeah, that's that's about it. Well, next line. Okay, Prabhupada and his Vani will remain as the effulgent acharya on the, in the center of each Iskon temple for the next ten thousand years. Can you explain? Yeah, Srila Prabhupada is the acharya for Iskon, and. Once we get in line with that reality, then we will be that much closer to liberation. And when we say those are Prabhupada is a dead guru, and we need a loving guru. Well, that's just stupidity. Because? Because he's alive in his instructions. And he's alive in his personality, too. He's a resident of Krishna Loka. How can he die? Right. Uttama Adhikari means resident of Krishna Loka. Resident of Krishna Loka means not subject to birth and death. So people are so stupid, they think that if Prabhupada's body is not here, that now they can all rush forward and become gurus, when their body is going to be dead and rotten in the tomb. The stupid yeah. fools will end up in in um, in samadhis, which means that they all know no peace. Because in the the whole thing about this, the sacrifice of the um, the cremation is that so much sin is burned up. Then the shraddha ceremony, you take the ashes and you have the shraddha ceremony, that gets rid of even more sinful reactions. But samadhi. You get to keep all your sinful reactions. That's why the samadhi is designed only for pure devotees. Right. Because if you have somebody like Narutam Das Thakur or Vishwanath Chakravarti in a samadhi, or Prabhupada in the samadhi, you go close to the samadhi and you become purified because they give off purifying energy from the so-called dead body within the tomb, within the samadhi. But if you're not pure, it's just another cruel joke. Exactly. So read the next verse, why not? Okay, yes, Lord Krishna is still alive and Srila Prabhupada is still eternal and alive. He will always be alive. Okay, keep going. Are you ready to fill the streets of every town and village with Sankirtan for the next 10,000 years? If you are, then welcome to ISKCON in its pure and unadulterated transcendental form. Jai. Jai. No, oh, I don't know. There's lots of people who think you have to have another guru, another guru, another guru. Or there's lots of people that say if you read a bunch of Shastra and you run out of Prabhupada's books, get a bunch of other Shastra that isn't Prabhupada's and read it, read it, read it, and that somehow that will help you. But I, 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 
fail to see how that will help anybody. Prabhupada is the Acharya. And if you say Prabhupada is dead, what I would say to anyone that says Prabhupada is dead, no, Prabhupada's not dead. You're dead. You're dead because you cannot see the Prabhupada is alive. If you can't, life comes from life. So if you see that Prabhupada is dead, that means you're dead. Death, you know, death comes from death. But if you see Prabhupada is alive, then you're alive. Life comes from life. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. That's sensible? Yeah. Okay, that's the end of that whole thing? That's the end. Okay, so is Ramachandra back yet? No. Okay. We have Vinayak, Mohit, you, Jai. and Janas Priya. Jai. What does Janas Priya want to say? Uh, I agree pretty much with everything. Did you find... If I was you, looking, I was if looking. I, if I said stuff that you disagreed with, then you're doing yourself the big, big disfavor by not saying so while I was reading. While I, was, oh, I, I always, when I hear something, I always, if I don't agree, I, I, I always tell you. Yeah, so if you don't agree, scream. That's not true. I disagree. At the top of your voice. Okay. But you did, did you do that? Did you want to do that? Is there anything that you listened to that you wanted to scream? That's not true. Um, I was surprised that you liked Radhanath Swami with all his history. I'm sorry? I was surprised that you liked Radhanath with all his criminal history. Oh, I don't like him as a criminal. I don't like him as the person that arranged for Suochan to be murdered. I don't like him because he was part of the murder conspiracy to murder Ayindra. I don't, I don't like him because he was a follower of Kirtan Ananda. But I do like that, that they built the Bhaktivedanta Hospital he, beca he didn't want to become an ISKCON guru, or he didn't want to become a guru at all. He was part of Kirtananda's group, which was a completely different society. But the G GBC came and asked him to join them. Before the GBC asked him to join them, his whole temple and all his followers in the temple, they were absolutely delightful. Of course, as soon as they became under the GBC rule, they became miserable. Do I like Radhana Swami? Well, what can I say? Every time Radhanath Swami sees me, he throws himself and embraces on the ground and embraces my feet. How can you not like somebody who does those thoughts? <laughs> you see what I mean? I don't think, I, there, you could say, if I met Adolf Hitler, would I like Adolf Hitler? I have to say there are probably many things about Adolf Hitler that I would like. Not that he killed so many people, not that he led the world into, he was a, Prabhupada said he was a Shakti Veshavatar. He was a Shakti Veshavatar to bring about the ruin of Europe. Shakti Veshavatar doesn't necessarily mean So, so, so you, you like him because he offers, he touches your oh, feet? I, I, I like him because he's nice. But do I like what he does? No. Do I approve of him? No. Should he be a guru? No. Okay. Good enough for me. But you're to take into account that I am a generous hearted person. I don't, I'm not political. I don't say, what party do you belong to? Oh, I hate you because you're that party. I don't, no. He does, he does things. He's got good cow program. Am I going to say go to hell? The Prabhupada tell us to open hospitals? I'm sorry? The Prabhupada tell us to open hospitals. No, no, Prabhupada was rather against it in, in principle. But that hospital actually turned out to be quite useful. 
but it wasn't created by ISKCON. It was created by uh, people like, um, if, you, if you know him, um, the, um, in India, what's, oh my God, what's his name? Um, one of the, several of, Kirtananda had disciples who were richest men in India. They wanted to open a temple, a hospital, and they got brought enough to help manage it. Uh, Vinayak Sharma put a comment. He said, Prabhupada also used to appreciate Gandhi sometimes and criticize sometimes, but he did not hate anyone. Exactly. I don't hate anyone. Yeah, that's very nice. Thank you, Vinayak Sharma. Because um, I don't, don't confuse that if I say, you know, they say, oh, Narayan likes, I like Narayan. I think it's, everything he says is true. He doesn't hate uh, Radhanath, therefore I can take initiation from Radhanath. That is not my point of view. And since Radhanath joined up with Iskand, he's become very much depleted, weakened by joining with Iskand. He had a very good group of people working with him. He got these people from the, uh, what's it called, that school, Rupa, do you know it, in India? The, um, eh. You know, it's the most it's the most exclusive school in India, and all these people would come there, super genius guys. And I, the, I, the, what? IIT. Yeah, yeah, IIT. Uh, exactly. Thank you. And the IIT would have these people. So the Radhanath would talk with the, the people wanted to become Radhanath disciples. Their parents said, no way. Like Radhana said, supposing they become disciples, but I let them finish their degree at IIT. The parents said, fine, there's no problem. So he did. So he ended up with taxi drivers with, with genius IQs and stuff like that, running, working at the temple. So it was very interesting. I like intelligent people. And they were super brilliantly intelligent people from very high level, uh, rich homes, which was nice because they knew where to get the best flowers for the altar. They knew where to get the best sweets. So when they had that program in 2003, everything was run by Radhanath's people. That's where I ended up liking Radhanath. Do I, if I were going to go to India right now, would I like Radhanath? No, not really. I probably wouldn't at all. No. I only liked Radhanath because of 2003, before he became an ISKCON member. So please don't under, misunderstand. Well, I'm, but I'm if, very happy. But if you, you want to take a ripping I'm, initiation from Radhanath, I have no I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend that to anybody to take ripping from any ISKCON guru. Well, it doesn't make much difference, does it? Yeah. Why, why does it make a difference? Because they'll, they'll, they'll say, yes, I'll do the Ritvik initiation, but they'll take him as disciples. And they'll no, be no, there. No, say, no, you did Ritvik, I'm a disciple of Prabhupada. There's a, there's a there, you may be aware, but there's at least half a dozen ISKCON gurus that do. So, <laughs> do act as representative of, of the Acharya, meaning if you're a worshiper of Tamal Krishna who poisoned Prabhupada, Ritvik. Yeah, means but I, I think I, I'm pretty sure when they do those initiations, they say, I initiate you on behalf of Srila Prabhupada. It's only lip service. Yeah, so. Well, who cares? <laughs> if they do the ceremony with Prabhupada as the guru, it doesn't matter what lip service it is. They can lay no further claim on the disciple. I mean, what claim can they put on the disciple? If that person is a disciple of Prabhupada. Well, they'll end up associating with disciples of that guru. It makes sense. I'm sorry? They will end up associating with disciples of the guru. Why? It's just, so that's just how it goes. Not really. There was a, what is the name of that guru who does ritual initiations in northern India? Nava Yogendra? Nava Yogendra. Navi Ogendra came to Los Angeles and he did a, 
I don't, I don't like the word rific because it's from a murderer's mouth. Represent the, the uh, rep officiating acharya, what you would like to call rific because you like the murderer. Uh, rific, rific, initiation of a devotee who is a hundred percent Prabhupada disciple. His daughter took a hundred percent first initiation, and then took a hundred percent second initiation in the New Dwarka temple by the pujari, who's but technically is officiating acharya. And then Navayogendra performed the ceremony, the, the, the prayers, and made her into a disciple of Prabhupada. And he will not take her as under, I know what you're talking about, but there's yeah. a lot of ones like- Yeah, I, I know Navayogendra and I, I like him, he's my friend. Yeah, so people could take initiation from Navayogendra, they don't have to take initiation from Radhana. Uh, it doesn't matter. As long as it is a officiating acharya, doing a making them into a disciple of Prabhupada, then it doesn't matter who does it. If they're, you know if they're twice born, they have to be Brahman initiation. Any Brahman initiated devotee can perform the fire sacrifice to make someone a. They don't have to be a guru. They don't have to be anything special. Yeah, they <laughs> have to. They have to be strictly following. Strictly what? following. Strictly, of course, strictly following. Whereas like, then the initiation. Like, like a puj but they could be like a pujari, right? Yeah. Or even a cook. As long as they're strictly following, then uh, they yes. do the ceremony. Exactly. Strictly, of course, strictly following. If they're not strictly following, they can't do anything. If they're not strictly following, they shouldn't be a pujari. And I don't know if they have to be proud by disciples to do the officiating acharya, or they could be third generation or fourth generation? Or? As long as they're acting in behalf of Prabhupada, they can do it, why not? It doesn't have to be, then how can it be Prabhupada's disciples? The Prabhupada's disciples are all gone or they're dead or they're seduced by the gurus. I mean, why should they be Prabhupada's disciples? It can be anyone who is twice born, okay? All right. Because what Prabhupada said is, Iskan is my body. So because Prabhupada said, Iskan is my body, that means that the, uh, if Iskan is my body, if Prabhupada said, Iskan is my body, then that means if you initiate in behalf of Iskan, then you're initiating in behalf of Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada's body is not material, it's spiritual, transcendental body. Just like his gun is transcendental, Prabhupada's body is transcendental, Prabhupada's mercy is transcendental, Prabhupada's the mantras are transcendental, and Prabhupada's kirtans are transcendental. And just stop to think of it. How many people chant like Prabhupada's kirtans on, on tape? They're, everybody's such a rascal. They want to do their own thing, don't they? Why don't they go back to their spiritual master? Why don't they chant like their spiritual master? What is the objection that they have to sounding like their spiritual master? There's devotees of our big shots, big temple presidents, uh, GBCs and whatnot. They have their own recordings and they make so many kirtans on recordings. They play bass guitar and stuff like that. But they will not chant Prabhupada's mantra. They won't chant the melodies that Prabhupada chanted. Nor will they listen to the mantras and chant the way the, the recording is. You see? I, I have uh, one more thing that I'm not very clear on is if Prabhupada- yeah, Go right ahead. We're, we only Prabhupada, have eight more minutes, so please. Prabhupada ask. made the GBC the ultimate authority, correct? ultimate managing authority under as elected for three year terms. Yeah, but they didn't follow that and Prabhupada knew that. 
Yes. He never changed his point of view. They changed right. their point of view. Right. So that's that's their that's where they think because they're the ultimate authority. They, they can do whatever. Well that they, they know damned well that they're liars, cheaters, crooks, murderers, and child molesters. They know they are, and embezzlers. They know that. They also know one more thing besides that. Who's strong enough to stop them? Do you think Prabhupada, I, I've been doing investigation with Girardi, who prints Prabhupada's original books and, and others, trying to find out, is there any indication that Prabhupada ever signed anything to give the bogus TBC any power to act as they do? No, the only document that exists regarding the GBC is the direction of management in which the GBC is to be elected from temple president for three year terms. End of story. And that's still true, but who is strong enough to go and kick them where they need to be kicked? You see, we have to do that. We have to stop the GBC. But we don't want to destroy ISKCON. We want to destroy the GBC. Once the GBC is destroyed, all the corruption of ISKCON will go out. And if it doesn't, we can make it go. We can force it out. Because without the GBC, ISKCON will not have any backup power. I mean, how can you, how can you, have a powerful ISKCON gurus if the gurus are appointed by the GBC and if the GBC has been kicked out, that means it's kicked out the gurus too. Does that make sense? The problem is we're very weak people. Weak and we believe any damn thing. We believe Ritvik when the murder of Tamal says Ritvik, we do not believe officiating Acharya when Prabhupada says officiating Acharya. That's the way people are. They go with the, they, they go whichever way is the path of least resistance. So anyone who says Ritvik is saying poison Prabhupada. They, but they don't think they're saying that. Anyone who says officiating Acharya, people say, well, what's that? That's what Prabhupada said instead of Ritvik. But did Damal accept it? No. May 28th, he refused to accept the officiating Acharya. And leading up to the July 9th, he refused to accept officiating Acharya. I'm absolutely nauseous explaining it over and over again. People say, no, Ritvik is there, Ritvik is there. No, it isn't. There was no word Ritvik in ISKCON language before July 9th. And it was put there, forced into it by Tamal. The result was Prabhupada didn't sign the, the July 9th letter. I don't know if you're aware of that or not, but Prabhupada witnessed the July 9th letter, but Tamal signed it right in the middle with his big, big, Signature. Oh, right? yeah. I, 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 I've been investigating that. I'm glad you, you brought it up because I looked at the signature and that's not Prabhupada's signature on the July 9 letter. In the middle. Yeah. That's Tamal oh. Krishna's signature. Yeah. And it's funny well, because so I, found, I found another document for 1970 that has exactly the same signature, and it's also Tamal Krishna signing as Prabhupada. And what was the signature? What was the document? Um, some document in 1970, I, I don't recall, but well, I, I, I was just looking for the signatures because I looked yeah, at I that wish signature. You knew which, I wish you knew what the document was. And I was wondering if anybody saw Prabhupada sign that document. Which uh, one? We have, we, have two minutes. we have two minutes to go. Three minutes. But um, which, which, what are you talking about? Yeah, the last order. Did anyone saw him sign what? 
the last order. The, the, the July 9th letter? Yes. He signed on the left-hand side as a witness and gave his approval, but he did not sign as the author. Kamal signed as the author. Yeah. And I like to say to people, if you don't believe me, ask your attorney. People are so dumb, they don't know that the placement of a signature on a document is ev means everything. If you're in the center, front, bottom center of a document, you're the author, end of story. If you're signing on the side, you're a witness, end of story. And Prabhupada, of all people, knew that. So did he sign, Prabhupada signed that or not? He signed as a witness, but not as the author. Mm. Because he signed on the left-hand side in smaller lettering. Okay, it's 10 p.m. No, it's two more minutes. Not according to my clock. What's your clock? Mine is my computer. Yeah, I got 58. Okay, yeah. two minutes. You have a very eager clock. Okay, does anybody want to say anything? Always think of Krishna, never forget Krishna. Exactly. Jai. 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 Hare Krishna. We have one Hare. more minute. Yeah. Mohit, what do you want to say in the last minute that we have? Just chant Hari and be happy. That's the all. Just do quality japas. That's the only path back to God. And that's it. Just follow yeah. Prabhupada's steps and you'll find or you'll feel the spiritual energy into you and that's it. Jai. Jai, Prabhupada. For one, some mysterious reason, it says, still says 9.59. Well, that's the time. We've got part of a minute. Okay, it's 10 o'clock. Now it is 10 o'clock. Okay, before. everybody, Here's thank it. you so much for coming and participating in this Zoom meeting. And we'd like everyone to know that Rupa Manjari is the leader of this particular session. Uh, Ra Ramachandra is the leader for Wednesday and Thursday. Rupa Manjari is the leader for Sunday. And Ramachandra participates, but Rupa Manjari is the heavy hitter. Okay, thank you, everybody. Good night. Hare Krishna. Jai Prabhupada. Hare 